whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my living, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend, and not a stranger. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, said the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Alleluia. gather this day to give grateful thanks to God for the life of Diane Louise Kerwin. We offer this Eucharist for the repose of her soul and for the comfort of her family and all others who knew and loved her. Diane was adamant that her requiem should be a joyful celebration. So it is in that spirit that we gather to remember her and commend her soul to God. Bearing in mind a quotation from Mother Basilia that Diane claimed as her personal motto. This is my happiness. God is my father, and I am his child. Please join in the hymn.
mentioned, there's going to be a wide variety of music in today's service, and Diane picked the music. So we see many, many facets of her remarkable personality in the music that she picked. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Diane. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console all who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is a reading. Can you all hear me all right? This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. A long time ago, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to some people in a little town called Philippi. But because Diane specifically asked us to read this, I suggest we think of this as a letter from Diane. If Diane were here, she might want to tell us this. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just and pure and lovely and of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Remember, this is Diane speaking. <laughs> Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Just do it. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. That's Diane. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. And now let's join together and read. I have to get my paper. We're going to read together the 23rd Psalm. So let's read. The Lord is my shepherd. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of them that sleep. Christ is risen, and death has lost its dominion forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rise and reign with the name of God. to uh, the church. Uh, I haven't been in here for a while. I uh, bought a special tie, <laughs> cut my hair. We have been, I'm just going to go right into it. The way I'm going to do this is uh, if I start reading fast, you know I'm getting into an emotional hole, and I'm going to paddle hard to punch through it. So I'm going to start reading as fast as I can if I feel emotions rising. All right, we have been blessed to know a wise woman, a healer within our midst. Diane Louise Kerwin, a spiritual being transcended to this earth on 6-11-35. Born on the island of Bermuda, she was the epitome of the Bermuda girl. She was an avid beachgoer where she would go with her girlfriends to lay off on the white sand and the pink sand of the local beaches. As a woman of faith, she not only prayed, but worked diligently for the children and the suffering, the destitute and the unwanted of the world. My mom was a woman of immense faith. She felt there was so much to be benefited by faith and prayer and love and forgiveness. Her uh, wait, wait, I missed something. All right, I missed a full paragraph. <laughs> it says, uh, my mom was my guide, my life coach from Bermuda. She was a strong, independent, determined woman. Also one of the kindest people I know. But she stood up for herself in a Winnie the Pooh way. <laughs> Some of the last spunky words were in the ICU in Reading where the ICU trauma team were gathered around and we were discussing her next surgery. The doctor was trying to tell her how to use the breathing device to strengthen her lungs and she looked at him and said, just because you're a doctor doesn't give you the right to tell me what to do. <laughs> Diane lived her life speaking up for herself and was a voice to many who had no voice. The women and children of not only India but all over the world. 
if she saw something or someone who needed help, she was determined to help that person, no matter who they were or what gender, race, or religion they belonged to. She did not judge. She felt that Jesus and Buddha, Allah, and all the other gods and goddesses she encountered in her travels were all from the same family. Diane simply wanted to help those who were not as privileged as her. As she would say to me, I'm working on privilege sharing, dear. <laughs> she emulated kindness, but she was not a pushover. If, she, if you would tell her she couldn't, she would find a way she could. <laughs> my mom saved my life and was a guide, my sage, and my counsel. Uh, this is a tough part. Well, when I was 14, I was in a motorcycle accident that put me in a coma for five days. My mom stayed with me the entire time. She was there with me right by my side. She wouldn't listen to the doctors who told her I might not be able to speak or walk or do anything when and if I woke up. That just spurred her on. She was determined to do everything she could to help her son. She went to her groups for support. She went to her Bible study group, her women's groups, any woman who had talents in ways that would help my brain heal, she did it. She never gave up on me or anyone who was suffering. She understood the PTSD I suffered from, and she knew it was not me. Mom loved me through it. She wanted to hear your joy, but she also would listen to your pain. She was a woman of faith. The story she told me just before she fell and broke her ribs was a story of faith. She looked at me and said, Son, I don't know how they do it. People with no faith. They must be so lonely when their luck runs and turns out against them. I see people in the hospital completely alone with no one. How do they do it without faith? Being a loving, caring, compassionate mother, she had the willpower and the determination to raise her family with all the care she could. We as a family, uh, I'll just introduce, there's three books to my mom. There's the Bermuda book, book one. There's book two, Colorado. And there's book three, Mount Shasta. And to know her, you need to understand all three of those books. But it's kind of hard now, she's dead. But anyway, um, so uh, being a loving, caring, compassionate mother, she had the willpower and the determination to raise her family with all the care she could. We as a family did not have a lot of material things and were pretty financially strapped. After my dad lost his job with Young Life, which was the driving force to move to Colorado from Bermuda, our whole situation changed. And I just had a major motorcycle accident. My dad had the insurance check in his pocket, and it was late when he showed up at the hospital. My mom went to work again, working for the school cafeterias as a cook and a dishwasher. She found a new church in Manitou Springs, Colorado, which was more her style, small, community-based, and warm, which helped those who were struggling. She was determined to provide for her family. Our financial situation is what lit the flame in her heart to make a change. As my dad grew sicker with his blood disease, my mom had the insight and encouragement to go back to school. Returning to school at 50, after struggling financially for years was what she needed to do to support herself. She was told by many that she wouldn't get a job in social work and she was wasting her time. But all that did was light a flame in her heart which generated her determination. She not only went back to school but had to commute an hour north and south, Pueblo, Denver, to attend classes, and despite all the naysayers, she ended up getting her master's in social work and became a licensed clinical social worker. And she got a job. 
with El Paso County Health Department, where she worked in the jails and with the children of drug addicts. She was a go-getter. Never did she just let life happen to her. She never let go of her paddle and chose her line through life with sort of a plan, sort of a plan, kind of like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Type of predator, determined to make things happen, not with force necessarily, but with grace, plain old hard work, kindness, a lot of pure luck, and the slyness of a fox. My mom was a rebel. She was a poacher, not a sundown poacher, <laughs> but a beach poacher. As, she, as we were growing up in Bermuda, she would sneak us into the fancy pants five-star hotel beaches where only the guests were allowed. She would say, just pretend you're a guest and follow me. <laughs> and I would be, oh, mom, do we have to do? And I can hear her now, oh, Michael. Stop complaining. <laughs> Diane Kerwin was all about seeing the goodness in people and trying to help those who suffer with a few kind words or even a card. In Bermuda, she was a nursery school teacher. When she met my dad in a play, she had her nurse's uniform ready and a ticket booked for Canada to become a nurse. That was not to be, for she had four boys, Paul, Michael, Mark, and Stephen, by the time she was 30. And then they adopted my sister, Brid, at two. My mom was fun and sparkling with joy. Even that stuff in Colorado, she went through it with a sparkle in her eye. You couldn't dull it. It was there. Even with all those experiences, she just amazed me. I said, how can you be so happy? Why don't you be some grumpy like me? <laughs> My mom was fun and sparkling with joy. She was always ready for an adventure. I think one of her first rafting experiences was with me on the Animus River in Durango, Colorado in the summer of 1987. I took her down the town run in a bucket boat. self bailers weren't invented then yet, I don't think. We were running class two and three fine. Then came the bridge. There was a huge hole under that bridge. It even had a name. They called it the Santa Rita Hole. I didn't realize how big it was when I tried to skirt it. We ended up side surfing in the hole <laughs> in a 14-foot bucket boat. I was yelling, high side, high side. But that was my first issue with my mom's hearing. Thank God we came out with, without flipping. I had the oar in there, digging it in, I was going high side, she was way down there. <laughs> and then I said, when we settled down and we got ready to row again, I asked, why didn't you get on the high side? I was yelling for you to do that. And she responded, I thought you said right side, honey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh again. Once she saw her family leaving Colorado, she decided to relocate to Mount Shasta, California in 1997, so that she could share her grandchildren's lives. She enriched my kids' lives so much with her kindness and curiosity for adventure and life, she came on almost every raft and camping trip we went on as a family. In fact, I remember once on her way back from Bluegrass in Telluride, she set up her tent twice on animal homes. She had an ant one night, ants crawling up her nose, and a rabbit the next night bonking into the floor of her tent trying to get out. And I asked, I asked her, why didn't you move your tent or ask us to do it? And she said, she just said in her Winnie the Pooh way, oh, I couldn't bother. I just took a Benadryl. <laughs> the only reason she began to travel is because the weather in Mount Shasta. The year she moved here was an El Nino year and it rained nonstop for months. So she became depressed and sa said, mumbling around her house in a Winnie the Pooh sort of way, this is what the winters are like here, I'm going to travel. The winters here are horrible, she said. 
And she did. She traveled around the world seeing all the sights while helping the less fortunate along the way. During her travels, she started a nonprofit branching off from my brother's nonprofit, CURF, which stands for Kerwin International Relief Foundation. Um, she, my brother Mark, and my sister in law, Angie, started CURF India, which built schools, provided necessary surgeries for the poor, and general health care in the clinic she helped build. Kerf India also provided clean drinking water for the community in Bogaya, Bihar, India. She was one of the most social people I know. I couldn't keep track of whether she was at G&T night, book club, fiber arts, the hiking club, or Kirtan. We had to think which night it was and why she wasn't answering her phone, other than the fact she was deaf. My mom was an avid outdoor adventurer and a lover of the natural world's f flora and fauna. She knew her plants and flowers. She was one of the kindest, most loving people I know. I'm glad that she was able to enjoy my love for rivers, which soon became her love also, and allowed her to spend so much time with my family. My kids, Niall and Cedar, are who they are today, largely due to their grandma, Diane. She also made it a point to spread her energy around to all her grandchildren wherever they lived. It was always her dream to have a large family since she had only one sibling who was nine years younger. And she made the effort to give energy to all her family in this country and others. She always reminded us of family birthdays. Now who's gonna do that? Me? I can't even remember how to tie my shoes, so I guess that's you, Cheryl. <laughs> okay, moving on. I, this is a poem that I had read for my mom, and she really liked it, and it just reminds me of her. Uh, it's called The Summer Day by Mary Oliver. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Thank you for coming. Be like Diane, live like Diane, and the world will be a kinder, gentler place. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate it.
Let us pray. Loving Father of all, we pray to you for Diane and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Alleluia. Our Lord Jesus Christ has triumphed over death and the grave. We will break the bread of the kingdom of life eternal, rejoicing in the victory of our Savior. Alleluia. May remain seated during the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ has won the victory over sin and death. Therefore, let us, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. In the Episcopal Church, we practice open communion, which means anyone who feels drawn to share in the sacrament is welcome to do so, whatever their denominational or religious background. If you are wish to receive communion and are gluten intolerant, we do have gluten-free wafers for you. Uh, we think of everything. <laughs> so if you are a person who needs a gluten-free wafer, simply whisper to me as I come to you, and I'll give it to you. Also, because of COVID, we do not have sh the sharing of the common cup. Instead, I dip the host into the wine and place it in your hands. If you do not wish to share in communion, but would like to somehow participate more fully, you're welcome to come forward for a blessing which I will be happy to give to you, and you can indicate that to me by crossing your hand over your chest. Again, the gifts of God for the people of God, all are welcome at the Lord's table.
Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so did you ordain when you created us, saying, You are dust and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend our sister Diane. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a child of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tombs. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who call upon his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. We're going to sing a chant here in the Hindu tradition. Diane loved to come to chanting that I would need over the years, and uh, I decided I'd like to read a chant that is uh, put into the circumstance. Uh, it's not in English, so I just want to say a few words about it. But in the Hindu tradition, there's many names for the one God, each name relating to a particular aspect of God, the power of God. So this is a Ganesha chant. Ganesha is associated with successful beginnings, auspiciousness in the beginnings. So I'm seeing this as a new beginning for Diane, and that uh, we, we wish all auspiciousness and blessings and success in that new beginning for her soul. And it's a new beginning for all of us because we're learning to live without her physically present. And it's a new way of relating to her. It's not that she's gone, but it's a new beginning. So Ganesha Chan means victory, hail to God, bless us with auspiciousness in this success in this new beginning. Thank you. 
Diane asked that the following poem, which is also a prayer, be read at her requiem, which she attributes to her Bermuda grandma, Grandma Petty. Father, in my hands and keeping, now I place all my affairs, every little situation, all my tasks and cares, all my loved ones, fully knowing they can either fall or fail. They are in thy sure protection, nonetheless, while thy love encircles all. In utter resignation, I relinquish worry, thought. From my shoulders, loads are lifted. I accept thy truth as taught. Take my loved ones in thy keeping. They thy blessing will receive. Let thy holy benediction be outpoured, as I believe. As my faith in me increases, give them back theirs, one by one, steady in their thought and vision, till thy work in them is done. Diane had one other request. She had a deep concern for the ongoing suffering in Ukraine, and she asked that we include the prayer for Ukraine today that we use in every Sunday liturgy here at St. Barnabas. You may have noticed a small drawing there to the side of the altar. It represents our prayers as a community of faith for the people of Ukraine. The pr prayers are actually woven into the, the paper that was made uh, for that, that picture. And of course, it's blue and yellow, the colors of the Ukrainian flag. This is the prayer that Diane loved so much. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for a just peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, that wisdom, discernment, and compassion would guide all their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able to receive God's blessing.
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. There is a reception in the hall. I hope you will all join us for it. It's provided by the women of St. Barnabas Church as an offering of love to Diane and her family. So let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Thank you.